So here we have an example of the addition rule, and specifically with disjoint events. And all that's saying is, imagine you have two events, A and B, and they're disjoint. That means mutually exclusive. In other words, they can't both happen. There is no intersection. That's what disjoint means, no intersection. Mutually exclusive, no intersection. They don't cross. When that happens, your addition rule becomes much more uh, manageable. Because typically, what we would do is for A or B, you would add both up, probability of A plus the probability of B, and then subtract the intersection because you're double counting. But here, when the intersection is not happening, this value is 0. And there's no need to subtract it. So I guess two things to say, say or is, first of all, if you know that the events are disjoint, you can just add them up. If you're trying to figure out if they're disjoint, you can prove it by showing that the intersection equals 0. That will show you there's no intersection, and therefore they are disjoint. So let's look at this problem and see what we have happening here. There's a set of 40 cards, and these 40 cards have the following properties. 10, uh, 10 black cards have squares on them. 10 black cards show circles. So I'm going to draw that square, circle. 10 showing X, 10 red ones showing X. Let me switch over to red. 10 red X's and 10 diamonds. That's a diamond. Okay. Card will be selected at random from the set. Find the probability that the card is black or shows a diamond. Well, it's got to be one or the other. Either it's black, which is in this case right here, showing squares or circles, or it shows a diamond here. All right, it can't be, it cannot be both. So the probability that it's black is what? Well, there's 20 cards that are black, right? 10 with squares, 10 with circles, so 20 that are black out of 40 cards. So this is the probability that they're black the cards, plus the probability that you're getting a diamond, which is there are 10 diamonds out of 40, and they're mutually exclusive because they, you can't have cards that are both, right? There are no cards that are black and red showing diamonds. It doesn't exist. This is the probability of a red. So if I want to know the probability of one or the other, it's the keyword or, you add them up and subtract the intersection, but the intersection is zero, so you just add them up really. All that talk, all that work, you just add the two probabilities because they're mutually exclusive, and you get 30 out of 40, which is three out of four. And this is the probability of uh, black, I'll put B, or diamond, D, bud. So like your friend, your buddy, there we go. Example three. Okay, so we've got a red cube that has faces labeled one through six. And the blue cube also has the same faces, one through six. And we want to know what's the probability that both show sixes. Well, imagine you have a red cube here and a blue cube here. There could be a six on the red or a six on the blue. That's what we're trying to look for. Now, there is no other way to look at this, right? That double sixes, it's always going to be a six with the red cube and a six with the blue cube. There's no other way to think about that. There's no other order. Even if I, if I draw it the other way, blue 6, then red, this is really just the same outcome said backwards. There's no real change in what's happening or how it's happening. It's still the same color cubes with the same numbers. So we're only going to consider one variation of this, this throw. So... That means you have a 1 6 chance of getting on the red and a 1 6 chance on the blue. And to multiply them together, we find a chance of getting both of them. And that makes sense because they are independent, right? So that's 1 out of 36. They are independent because whatever I roll on the red has no impact on what I'm going to be rolling on the blue. Then they have a total score of at least 11. There are three ways for this to happen. You can do 6 and a 5. Or you can do a 5 and a 6, or a 6 and a 6. Let me explain. Because it's at least 11, so it could be 11 or 12. So you could get the uh, red and blue die roll that we got in the last one. That's a 1 out of 36 chance. You can get a red, a blue 5, 
or a blue six, and then a red five or a red six. And these are different. In the first, we're saying, okay, you rolled a six on the blue, but a five on the red. And the next one, you rolled a six on the red and a five on the blue. And the third one, you rolled two sixes. Each of them have a one out of 36 chance of happening. But we're looking for all the ways it could happen, so we add them all up together, and we get three out of 36, because it, it's any of these ways. You can get a six and a five, or a five and a six, or a six and a six, and if you find yourself saying or, you're in a position to probably add the probabilities. I said probably add the probabilities, to most likely add the probabilities. So you get three out of 36, which is one out of 12. Okay. That's it for that page. I hope that helps.